My name is Father Norbert Meduja, Jr. I'm a Catholic priest and the pastor of St. Francis Cabrini Catholic Church in Houston, Texas. Katie Pfeffer came to our parish and shared what is called a theology of a mother's heart with the people at all of our Sunday Masses. The result was that over 500 people responded by committing to a holy hour once a week, whereby we were able to organize the hours in such a way that each hour is covered with at least two people with Jesus day and night. Now we have perpetual adoration with the Blessed Sacrament exposed in our side chapel. It is my pleasure to introduce Katie on this tape because I think that every Christian should hear her message. I would recommend Katie to any pastor, and it is my prayer that the theology of a mother's heart be heard in every parish. May God bless you. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have here in the parish a chapel or a small prayer room that can be open all the time so that anyone at any time, day or night, could come to visit and be with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? My name is Katie Peffer. I was a Protestant. Then God gave me the gift of faith to believe in the real presence of His Son in the Blessed Sacrament. I'm not a theologian, but God says that we were all created in His image and likeness, which means that by looking at ourselves, we can also know something about God. For this reason, I would like to call this sharing a theology of a mother's heart. All of us know the more you love someone, the more you want to be with the one you love. For example, the very nature of a mother's love is to want to be with and care for her children. And the greater the love, the greater the desire to be with and care for her loved ones. If one can understand the feelings of a mother's heart, doesn't this explain the very mystery of our Catholic faith? The real and personal presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Why He stays with us day and night in every tabernacle in the world is simply because He loves each of us so much that He never wants to leave us. He describes Himself as the Good Shepherd who is always with us in contrast to the hired hand who runs away. Saint Therese said, The heart of God in the Blessed Sacrament is more tender and sweeter than the heart of any mother. Therefore the little flower exclaims, Jesus is in the tabernacle expressly for you. The words of sacred scripture explain the love and presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament by saying, Can a mother forget her infant? Be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. Behold, I will be with you always, even until the end of time, because I have loved you with an everlasting love, and constant is my affection for you. St. John Vianney used to point to the tabernacle every Sunday and say, Jesus is really there. And if you only knew how much He loves you in the Blessed Sacrament, you would be the happiest person in the world. The Pope says the voice of Christ is giving each of us an especially urgent invitation at this moment to come closer to Him every day. Because life is a journey of faith and intimacy with the Lord, therefore we must find the time and the desire for prayer, in particular for adoration. Because God is hidden in the Blessed Sacrament and is just waiting for us to discover the secret of His presence. This is why our beloved Pope states, Jesus waits for you in the Sacrament of Love, where He repeats His timeless appeal, Could you not watch just one hour with me? This hour that Jesus wants you to spend with Him is spent any way you want. Some people like to bring their own favorite prayer books, while others like to pray the rosary or read the Bible or just speak to Jesus heart to heart like a best friend. What Jesus wants all of us to know is that He is the easiest person in the world to be with. 
absolutely the easiest person to please. St. Paul describes the Spirit of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament as gentle as any nursing mother fondling her little ones. For example, you may be so tired or troubled that you may want to come into His presence and do nothing, but just sit and relax and enjoy the sweet peace of Christ who says, Cast all your anxiety upon the Lord who cares for you. Fear is useless. What is needed is trust. My peace is my gift to you. The advantage of having a chapel always open is that it gives everyone an opportunity to participate, since you can choose whatever hour you want, and whatever hour you choose is most pleasing to the Lord. We need people for all the hours, morning, noon, evening, and night. But the hours we need you the most are in the middle of the night, because these hours require a sacrifice, and so they're the most difficult to get volunteers. So if you can, would you please consider taking an hour in the middle of the night? Because God cannot be outdone in generosity. Whenever we are generous with Him, He is ten times more generous with us. So if you need lots of extra blessings for yourself or for your family, you may want to consider taking an hour in the middle of the night. But the best reason of all is that sacrifice is the language of love. There is no sacrifice that we can make that compares to the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross in order to redeem us, remain with us, and that we might receive Him in Holy Communion in the greatest intimacy. But those who are willing to make the sacrifice to be with Jesus in the middle of the night are the ones who will win the extraordinary graces for a new day. If the heart of a mother wants a better world for her children to live in, then infinitely more does the heart of God. For the Pope states, Our religion is a religion of glory, for the whole world is to be transformed into perfect love and perfect joy according to the Father's plan in view of the final coming of the Kingdom of God. This is the message of hope that our children need to hear in these difficult times. The world will not be destroyed by fire, but renewed by the fire of divine love coming from Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. The Pope teaches us the value of adoration by stating, Anyone, anyone who prays to the Savior draws the whole world with him. What incomparable consolation, the Pope exclaims, Your love means so much to Jesus that you draw the whole world and everyone in the world closer to Christ with each holy hour that you make. Adoration touches everyone and everything because it touches the Creator who touches everyone and everything. When we adore Christ, we plug into infinite dynamism and power. Adoration is more powerful for construction than nuclear bombs for destruction. Adoration will heal our church, and thus our nation, and thus our world. What power the Pope proclaims! Through adoration, the Christian will bring about the radical transformation of the whole world by Jesus who says, See, I make all things new. It's a great blessing to introduce to you Monsignor Joe Crosswaite, a priest of 45 years who was one of the first pastors to say yes to perpetual adoration here in Houston. Thank you, Katie. Dissertation on what the perpetual adoration means to you as a, as a parishioner and as a mother of five children, I'm very glad to express what a perpetual adoration has meant to me as a pastor of a parish, which eventually grew to 5,000, over 5,000 families. I had only been a pastor there at St. John Vianney here in Houston for three years when perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in our parish. And uh, it was a gift that no parish really deserves. It's, it's so beautiful. It's so meaningful. It adds life 
as nothing else besides the celebration of the, of the sacraments, particularly the celebration of the Eucharist, it is uh, the opportunity day and night to drop by and see your friend. Our Lord becomes so intimate and so available, so peace-giving, so peace-loving, that uh, it is a means by which a parish can be transformed. For uh, uh, nothing is more beautiful than having our Lord, our friend, befriend us, to be available to us. And uh, in spite of the fact that uh, it is a very, very active parish in doing social service works and, and everything else that a parish today does, I don't think anything else has meant so much besides the celebration of the sacraments as perpetual adoration. It's the oasis, our little oasis, where uh, our friend is always there uh, welcoming us and uh, helping us to carry our crosses. Uh, yes, of all the things that I did as a pastor, uh, I feel that this is one of the greatest gifts that God can give a parish. <laughs>